the reason that we secured those firearms, not seized them, we secured them, was for uh, the safety and to secure that property. And so we're not commenting specifically on the number. We've, we've used the term several hundred, and that's a number that we're going to continue to refer to. Well, here it's unused, especially here at Byline. We keep pushing on this story because it matters. It matters because the RCMP violated basic fundamental rights when they stormed into people's homes, busted into people's homes in many, uh, many cases, and seized firearms during the flooding of that town. As I said at the time, the law applies whether the sun is shining or the rain is pouring in. We now have confirmation on exactly how many firearms were seized, thanks to an interview with between Sun News and RCMP Sergeant Patricia Neely. I can tell you that uh, we did secure exactly 539 uh, guns. And as of uh, yesterday, 404 of those had been returned to the owners. It's possible, certainly, that there was guns with uh, trigger locks, but if they were out in the open or somewhere that very obvious, then we did secure them. We didn't want these, these weapons to fall into the wrong hands. That was, that was the only reason that they were, uh, they were secured. Guns with trigger locks seized. Well, why? That qualifies for safe storage. Sean Bevins is uh, Executive Vice President with the National Firearms Association, joins me now uh, via Skype. Sean, uh, were you shocked when the RCMP admitted the number of firearms they seized and that they were seizing them with trigger locks on them? Yeah, I mean, obviously, any time that there's, you know, unwarranted search and seizure of firearms, I mean, the National Firearms Association is concerned. Um, you know, I, 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 what kind of shocked me was, you know, these were, and, and, and the whole town was basically secured at that point. And the, the town was inhabited. I mean, there was nobody there in the town when, uh, you know, they it was It was surrounded by the army and the RCMP. Yeah, so there was, <laughs> there was obviously no looting happening, you know. There was no, you know, criminal bands or groups going through the town. Uh, they had secured the perimeter of the town. You know, we're dealing with homes that were obviously locked. They were, I believe people were informed before they left their homes to secure their residence and their private property. So if I have a, a thousand pound vault and it's in a basement and, you know, water is rising and I'm, I'm now looking at a flooded, completely, you know, submerged basement, um, I'm not going to leave my firearms in a thousand pound safe and I'm not going to carry the safe up the stairs. Um, and I mean, that's, that's the reality. I'm going to get those, those firearms to high, high ground, dry ground. And then I'm going to, you know, leave my residence for my own safety, and I'm going to lock the door. Um, you know, does that uh, does that constitute, you know, them going home, house to house to, uh, you know, to break down doors and to seize private property? Well, I mean, that I guess there's 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 a there's an inquiry that that, that looks like it's ramping up here. So hopefully, we'll get some answers to those questions. Yeah. Now the uh, the inquiry by uh, Ian McPhail, the interim acting commissioner for public complaints, has not been put together uh, yet. Hasn't started. But here is uh, what their office is telling us. They say we are now pulling together resources to get the review going. Hopefully the review will be completed by the end of October. One of the things that I've been saying, Sean, is that those of us that are concerned about this, and I, I'll, I'll, I've told you when, when you and I have chatted in the past, I've said it on the show countless times, I am not a firearms owner, but I'm still concerned about this and so should everyone be. We need to make sure that people come forward with their stories and that they get involved, that they don't just say, oh yeah, well, we'll let the review take care of it. I think people have to get active. Is the National Firearms Association uh, encouraging members, helping members to bring forward the stories that you've heard, that I've heard of, of firearms that were in closets with trigger locks on them that were taken? Uh, are, are, you, are you trying to get the members involved? Oh, absolutely. I mean, anytime that we can, you know, defend our membership and, 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 well, basically firearms owners across this country, I mean, that's absolutely something that those are initiatives that we're, that we're actively undertaking. I mean, that's part of our, of who we are as an association. You know, I, I think it's important that, uh, that we, that we all understand here that the, the big, the big, the bigger picture or the, that goes beyond the, uh, the, the unfortunate situation in High River is the Firearms Act. Um, and the Firearms Act is bad. And, it, and, and firearms owners in this country were sold a bad bill of goods. We were sold bad law. I mean, honest, law-abiding Canadian firearms owners across this country want police to have the tools in place to go after criminals and, and, and to be able to solve crime. Um, this is not what this Firearms Act is doing. This Firearms Act is criminalizing this country's most honest, 
most reputable, most upstanding uh, citizens in this country, and, and it ultimately gives them the arbitrary powers to be able to conduct search and seizures such as this. Uh, the, yeah, the, I, well, I, I disagree that it gives them the ability to do this, I, I, because the Charter guarantees against unreasonable search and seizure, the Alberta Bill of Rights guarantees against that. I know that there's a lot of concern about warrantless searches for, for firearms, that's primarily firearms uh, uh, retailers and such. But th this was going into private homes. It violated the Alberta Emergency uh, Act that was uh, declared a state of emergency. There are so many violations of the law along the way here that oh, no, we, we, we well, can't let it stand. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, yeah, I mean... But, it, but, but you're right about the Firearms Act. That, that has to be changed. You shouldn't be a criminal just for owning a firearm. And the only way you're not a criminal is if the government gives you the right piece of paper. That's not the way that it should be set up. And we've got to get that fixed. I, I think that right now the focus has to be making sure that the cops don't feel that they have the ability to do this in the future and get away with it. Yeah, well, I mean, I, well, obviously, when I when I what I wanted to touch on there was was the arbitrary power, and 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 we see that from one province to the next with the chief firearms officers and some of the draconian things that they've you know put in place and some of the things that they've implemented over 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 the the history and the course of C68. So, I mean, it begins with the arbitrary powers and it ends up in illegal search and seizure, obviously. Um, but this is kind of invent laws as you go, um, and it's and it's fundamentally wrong to who we are as Canadians and our democratic democratically decided processes that are decided in Parliament. Um, it, most of it stems, you know, from C68, and 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 that really is where the, the you know the, the the real underlying problem problem is is the, is the arbitrary powers that that are accorded to you know to the police bodies. I mean, yeah, obviously that is that that is the uh, absolutely. The long fight, and I know you guys are working uh, on a couple things on that front. Uh, let us know when you're ready to go public on that. Let us know when you're ready to talk about it, and we'll, uh, we'll have you back. Sean, we'll have to leave it there. Yep, uh, good great. talking to you again, my friend, uh, and, and all the best in this fight. Thank you very much, Brian. We'll talk to you soon. Drop by Facebook.com. Just search Byline or my name. You'll find us. Click like. You'll find stories like the one we just told you about now. Oh.